This is Mia Rosenthal and this is a demo for Tyler Visual Studies Digital Imaging showing the Pattern Maker tool. And you're going to start out with your pattern units that you're going to be developing. Um, and just for the demo, I'll just make a quick unit here that will also be a review of the uh, Pathfinder tool. So I'll start off, let's say, with uh, two circles. And I'll just copy and paste this one. Now I'm going to use the Align tool, which if it's not open, you'll find under Window Align. And let's see. Okay, so I'll start off by aligning these. And I will, uh, let's say I want to make this middle area a different value. I will go into my Pathfinder tool and I'm going to select Divide. Now if I go to my shape here and try to just change one unit, you'll see the whole object is being selected and I just need to make sure to go under Object Ungroup. So now I'm going to pull up my swatches, my swatches panel, and I'll go and select this middle unit and let's say I'm making it um, the 50% gray. Okay, so now I've got my unit here and to make a pattern from it I'm just going to select it and drag it over to my swatches panel and you'll see there's a new little swatch here with my shape I just made and if I want to make a shape and select for the fill my pattern. There it is. Now if I want to define how my pattern is repeating I can double click on it in the swatches panel and the pa uh, pattern options will show up. Now the first thing that I can pick is the tile type. The default is going to be grid which means it's um, repeating horizontally and vertically the same. I also have some other options here. You can see brick by brick, um, brick by column, and there's also a hexagonal option. So you can really, uh, this is really just the beginning though because you can also define how tightly the pattern is being repeated and that's really important when you are seeing how the pattern is coming together and also what's happening with the negative space uh, between my pattern units. So you can see here with no um, sort of with no changes I I'm seeing each individual unit and they're pretty they really look like separate units. If I decrease the space let's say with the width um, and hit return. You can see now they start to look more like rows where the units are um, hanging together a little bit more and I can also decrease the width and now you can see the negative space I'm starting to get this sort of um, diamond shaped here. Maybe I'll you know you can sort of play around with some different um, values. Okay so here we go it's just touching so I can also define the overlap. If I have any overlapping shapes, it'll um, define what is in front and what is behind. And here at the bottom, this is the preview of how many units I'm, I'm seeing in the preview. So okay, so I'm done with my pattern. I'm going to pick at the top done. Okay, so there it is. And you can see my pattern automatically um, updated when I save it. So I'm going to delete my pattern unit here. I don't need it. But now let's say I want to try another variation on my pattern. Um, so I have here where it kind of is looking like these horizontal rows. Maybe I'm going to go in and um, try the brick by column where it's going to look um, a little bit more vertical. And maybe I'm going to try decreasing the space a little bit more to see what happens. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit save a copy so I can compare my two patterns that I made. And once I've saved a copy I'm just going to hit cancel 
And now I can draw another shape and look at my second pattern next to it. So I can really take one pattern unit and start to do different variations um, on working with the same unit and you can see that they look really different. Now you might see some um, kind of these white lines showing up. I'm going to zoom in. Um, it's nothing to worry about in this case because you can see if I zoom in they disappear. But if for any reason you start to see areas in a pattern where it's not tiling together perfectly, if you go under File, Export, and Export a TIFF, that should solve any problems. And what's going to be happening here is you're going to be rasterizing your vector image when you save as a TIFF. So I click Pattern. Um, and then I can define here CMYK or RGB or grayscale. Um, I can just do grayscale for this. In resolution, you want to make sure if you're going to be printing, you're doing it at least 300 DPI. And I'll hit OK. OK. And um, it's writing the file. And that concludes the demo.